start small. I would say, you know, for the next five minutes, uh, you know, we're playing Simon Says and I'm telling you what to do, right? I mean, and I think too, a lot of people think of BDSM and like think it has to be like dark and scary and like, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be a horror movie. Welcome to Honey Do Me, a podcast that goes into the bedroom and beyond, hosted by Emma Norman and Cass Anderson. Here at Honey Do Me, we don't have all the answers, so we chat with experts, educators, and badass changemakers to get them. We are here to remind our listeners and ourselves that what we're going through is normal, that we are worthy of love and pleasure, and that we are all in this together. So tell us, honey, how do you do you? Howdy ho, Ranger, Ranger Joe. Joe. <laughs> what is that from? What is that from? Is that oh no, that's from Full House. Oh, okay. That's yeah. what I was gonna say too. When Joey does something. Is that yeah. his name or is it just Uncle it's, Joe? It's, Uncle it's, Joey. It's, yeah. Yeah. Howdy ho, it's Ranger just Joey. Joe. He's Uncle Joey to the kids. Are you sure? No, but I don't think I'm fact check. Fact check. Because it's Uncle Jesse. Yeah, it's just Joey. Yeah, but just Jesse's Joey. kids call him Uncle Joey. Okay. Okay, thank you for the sp uh, specific fact check. You're welcome. It I is... just knew you were wrong. That uh, Full House was my medicine okay. from the ages of probably four to nine. <laughs> All right. Medicine for nothing. It was, medicine, just, it was, was my like medicine. Show. It was my favorite. <laughs> Prescribed from the doctor? <laughs> yeah, my old doctor down on the corner prescribed me an episode of Full House a what? day. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know Anyways. who you are anymore. <laughs> I'm Ranger Joe. Okay, good to know. Good to what know, was his Joe. beaver's name? I could tell you my beaver's <laughs> name. What is it? Go ahead. Cynthia. <laughs> Cynthia. 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 Well, now everybody knows. Cynthia got a bit of a uh, treatment the other day. A treatment. Say more. Not the fun kind. <laughs> so what is the fun kind? The fun kind is sex. Oh, Getting yeah. her treated. I get it. Sex. I was thinking like a facial. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. She got a... Um, uh, full on waxing, full on naked mole rat waxing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for the visual. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> it was the worst thing that's ever happened to me in my life. And I've had a very fortunate life. You've had a very <laughs> fortunate life, my dear. That said a lot it about hurt you. It really bad. Yeah. It hurt I mean, really you've bad. you've never given birth. So. I've never given birth, but I would rather give birth than get waxed. <laughs> and, and I can say that with complete confidence. And we had a conversation <laughs> about birth last night. That's yeah. what we talked about with our friend. Exactly. Just all the horrible things that happened during so birth. So I know. you. I'm telling you how much I know about this. Mm -hmm. um, there were some, some extra special parts <laughs> of the waxing, though, that I yes. don't think are normal because... I I've gotten fully waxed multiple times, and this has never happened to me. So I would love for you love to get the me to full tell visual. A yeah. Enchilada. So I got the Brazilian, which means they also get your butthole. Yeah. Um, I'm going to just say my butt. I don't want to say the whole part. <laughs> Please keep saying no. butthole. I'm gonna, they also got my butt. And so before, I've only gotten waxed one other time. And I um, I think they, I was just happy babying it the first mm -hmm. time. This time, I was like, we're all ready. She's like, all right, we're going to do your butt. And I'm like, okay. And she's like, I'm going to have you get on knees and elbows. And I'm like, pardon me? And she's like, we get real intimate here. It's not even <laughs> hands and knees. Nope. Which would be a little more... Uh, dig I'd have dignified. more dignity. Yeah, it'd be a little more no, dignified. No, I was knocked down. They drop you down. <laughs> <laughs> just knees and elbows. Your arms out from under you. <laughs> Face just hits the, <laughs> hits the mat. And I was just wiped and swiped like a baby. It was so, like, I have had people inside of me, and this was more intimate than that. Oh, my And that's God. that's the honest truth. Honest to God. So at least that's the least painful part. Yes, so it is by far the least painful. While part. it's vulnerable, I didn't, I didn't hurt as much. You weren't crying. I wasn't you crying. weren't crying in that position. No, talk about demeaning. I was. <laughs> <laughs> but then she wipes the wax off with a little hanky. So then I was literally just getting wiped. You just got your ass wiped. <laughs> I got you my paid ass. to get your ass wiped. I sure did. It was so upsetting. So that's like what's happening. That's what's new with me. Was she talking to you? Yes. When it was going on? We were what, chatting. The what whole was time. the specific conversation <laughs> when you were in that position? I was asking her about her family. <laughs> 
I was like, so how many brothers and sisters do you have? As she was laying at laying ass, <laughs> laying ass <laughs> upon my butthole, <laughs> laying wax down my butthole. I was like, so one sister, and then she ripped it off, and now I have a clean old butthole. Clean old butthole, my favorite kind. <laughs> now everyone knows. Congratulations. How's your yeah. week? <laughs> Less eventful, oh, way less bummer. eventful. I did have a question for you though, because oh. Emma texted me the night before her wax, and she said, "And you can take this out if you want to." Uh, she said, "Can I come over in the morning to use your bidet I was before scared. I go get waxed?" Yeah, and so I was like, "Of course you can, because I'm a friend. I'm not a mm-hmm. foe." Yeah, and sure. the morning came, and you never showed. I know, and I was concerned for both you and your waxer. I was, and I yeah. just, I wasn't sure. Why were you scared? Were you scared of me? <laughs> were you scared? Of me? <laughs> I just got the job taken care of. Okay. I took a shower because I was getting really nervous. So oh, I was yeah. like, I just took a full on shower before I left. Mm-hmm. So I was like, eh, I don't need a bidet now. I just fully fucking spread my cheeks and yeah, sprayed I mean, a shower down it. Yeah. So were you bent over though? Yeah. Okay. All right. I then mean, you really your, got it. <laughs> would your bidet have been more thorough? Probably. Yes. But I felt like I. If you want to clean out fairly, your colon. <laughs> If I wanted to clean out my cold, if she was going inside my you butthole. You crank that baby up to 10 I would have and come you over. will. Yeah. It'll shoot right out of my mouth. That's how good it'll go. You're like a fountain in my bathroom. <laughs> Jesus H. Um, so yeah. People can write you out as a water feature. As a water feature? Just For my put wind. me in your... <laughs> put me in your bathroom. Water feature. Yeah. Just, a, just an M. I just installed her. I just installed her. <laughs> Think of how fucking disgusting that is. Holy Think how cow. expensive it would be to get somebody to be a human water feature in your house. Yeah, you could charge him. so much. So much money. Well, there's a career option if this doesn't work. I'm not unemployed anymore. <laughs> we just solved it. And we're done. And, and we're, we're done. done. <laughs> because Emma end. just got a new career. Yeah, I fucking did. Uh, well, that was fun. But until then... We until might as then. well just introduce this episode just for shits and gigs. I guess if we're just going to continue on with the work we already did. Uh, whatever. <laughs> what are we doing today? We are talking about how to be more dominant mm-hmm. in the bedroom with Sir Ezra. Yes, we are. And with my new shaved butthole, I will go far. <laughs> I am ready to be the dom of his dreams. The dom of his damn dreams. So why did you want to talk to someone about being dominant? Being dominant is something that I have struggled with in my sexual life, not so much my well, that's a lie. <laughs> not so much personally. <laughs> and like in my partnerships, I think I'm pretty good at being like very firm. Uh-huh. Um, kind but firm. Socially. But in like strange situations, I'm not very dominant. That's something I'm working on. I'm working on my confidence. Uh-huh. Um, but sexually, I just, I never really felt like I had the words. I never knew what to do with my body, the persona. Uh-huh. Like I had this idea that you have to be a certain way in order uh-huh. to be dominant. You have to be like a hard ass. You can't laugh. You can't smile. And that's just not who I am. Yeah. I like can't take things too seriously. Otherwise, it gives me anxiety. <laughs> um, yes. And so that's why I needed this lovely... 50 mm-hmm. minutes yes, that you're about to Ezra. <laughs> Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. That's exactly where I was as well. And I found a new identity through this, and you'll hear about that. Mm. It's, it, it's actually, I've taken it very seriously. <laughs> actually. And it is a part of my identity. I have a hairless butthole, and I am a princess. <laughs> so if that doesn't leave you wanting more, <laughs> I don't know what will. But we'll see you on the other side either way. Either honey. way. So uh, my name is Sir Ezra Algos. Anybody is welcome to just call me Ezra. And I am a professional dominant. I am a uh, BDSM coach and sex coach. I'm also a, the director of education at Sanctuary LEX Studios, which is my local dungeon, and an educator in my own right. And I'm also an author and a party promoter. And I think that's all of my jobs. <laughs> well, that's a full roster, I think. So you sound pretty busy. Will you explain a little bit more about what a dominant is? Yeah, absolutely. So um, there is sort of a natural power dynamic in all relationships. Sometimes it's unspoken, sometimes it's more fluid. But uh, dominant is really the one who is charged with making more decisions, right? So if you're looking at the, you know, your everyday world, your teacher is going to be dominant over you, your uh, doctor, the police officer that stops you at a, at a traffic stop, right? Those are all situations where you sort of must be submissive in order to, uh, like, just operate 
effectively, right? Mm -hmm. And there are other situations where you're going to be called to be more dominant, where you have to like tell the person what you want them to do, right? Um, I'm not going to be submissive to my massage therapist or I'm not going to get my knots out, right? And I have to say, hey, do it over here, do it over there. Mm -hmm. um, and so to me, being dominant and in BDSM, it's about sort of uh, romantic relationships and sexual relationships and really allocating the decision-making, the power, if you will, to one person. Okay, because like, what I feel like the general idea of if you say I'm a dominant in my relationship, my first thought is going to I'm kind of the scary one or I'm the like one that overpowers you. So the the dynamic doesn't have to be like kind of scary and intimidating, right? It might just be someone that's more like you said, the decision maker then? Yeah, I mean, it's it's consensual. Otherwise, it would just be abuse, mm -hmm. right? So um, the, the decisions are given to the other person. The, the, you know, the power is given. It's not, it's negotiated and like, it's no mystery in my relationships who's deciding where we're going to dinner, mm -hmm. right? That's always this conflict of like, you decide who's going to dinner. No, you decide. Like, yeah. no, I'm <laughs> fucking deciding. Mm -hmm. And if it's my decision that you're going to pick, then that is what I have decided. Okay. okay. <laughs> right? It's not, it's, to me, it's really reassuring because it's not unclear. Because mm -hmm. most relationships have a, like a natural power dynamic and then, uh, but it's just unspoken and unclear and it might change over time. You know, if you have a relationship with somebody and let's say, for example, you get in a relationship and the person you're in a relationship with is unemployed, but you've got a really good job, Right. Mm -hmm. So there are certain power dynamics that that will create if you're not, if you're not aware of them, then they'll just sort of happen naturally. Now, let's say during the course of the relationship, you lose your job and your partner gets a really good job. Now they've got all the financial power in the situation and that could really change the dynamic of the relationship. Mm -hmm. My relationship, on the other hand, we're mindfully using power exchange. So if my partner all of a sudden started making six figures and I'm not, mm -hmm. uh, the relationship power dynamics not going to change because we both have agreed that, that we want it to be a specific way. You're totally welcome not to answer this if it's getting too personal. But I think what I'm wondering, like if it's your entire like lifestyle, so it's not just about sexual gratification then, like it's about more. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's the whole life. So I want her to be the best person she can be. And so I'll push her in like her work ethic. I'll, you know, we both hold each other accountable in a lot of different ways. Um, I'm learning disabled. And so a lot of her submission to me is service in ways that help me uh, function. You know, mm -hmm. my memory is terrible. And I'd be like, can you do, can you do this? Can you help me with this? <laughs> uh -huh. Right. Wow, this is so fascinating. Yeah. Thank I, you so much for sharing yes, about your personal you. life. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, I'm happy to do it. Overall, it just sounds like you're the complete right person to be talking about being more dominant with. And so for us and our audience, we're curious about taking that first step into being more dominant in the bedroom. And so what are ways you can be more dominant in the bedroom if you're just trying to start out like role play a little bit with like dominant submissive? Sure. So I think that, you know, the best, the most important thing is to communicate, right? Mm -hmm. So the first thing you're going to want to do is communicate your needs or your interests and say like, hey, there's this thing I really wanted to try. You know, I love to be just in control for this, for this next hour, right? And what you're doing is you're setting boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think the, the biggest mistake people make is that there's no finite end point, Right. Mm -hmm. There's no finite beginning point. And when there aren't those things that can be really hard to navigate. So start small. I would say, you know, for the next five minutes, uh, you know, we're playing Simon Says and I'm telling you what to do. Right. Yeah. Uh, so it doesn't. I mean, and I think, too, a lot of people think of BDSM and like think it has to be like dark and scary and totally. like. And like, it doesn't have to be a horror movie, you know, <laughs> it's not saw. So <laughs> it can I mean, still it can be. be. <laughs> <laughs> I like, 
like the time restriction and kind of setting the scene in the conversation that you're talking about because I remember a time when I was having sex with my partner and all of a sudden he like flipped a switch and was being like giving me these ultimatums for sex well not ultimatums but like you can either do this or do that and I was unaware that we were starting this role play and I like started getting a little uncomfortable and I tried to have like a, okay can we stop and he like really stuck in that role And I mean, I did what I did was still consensual. So I'm not saying it was a bad experience, but it was like uncomfortable at first because I was like, oh, I don't we didn't talk about this and we didn't set it. And I didn't know it was coming. And like now I'm kind of thrown off and not as much in the moment, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You weren't given an opportunity for informed consent. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think that's especially when you're just starting out, it's a great time to have that conversation. And I like the Simon Says. I think that's so fun. Yes, because one of our concerns was, like, if I'm going to try and be more dominant, I can see myself laughing Mm -hmm. or breaking character or just, like, not feeling confident enough Mm -hmm. to actually do it. Who said you couldn't laugh? Who said? (laughs) I did, apparently. Yeah. (laughs) So I guess that's another one of our... ideas like preconceived notions about being dominant or submissive is that you can't break character so what do you suggest well and i I think too it also hints to this notion that um power bearers are unhappy right not every person in power is a is like a prison guard right yeah Oh, oh my I god. Love that. You're like yeah. that's, that's like, already <laughs> that's already shifting the whole idea and making it more approachable and like more fun. Like okay. if I can actually just be myself, yeah. but dominant. Yeah. Here here's a good one for you. Um when you, do you guys have uh pets soon? Mm-hmm. Cats or dogs? You seem like dogs. cat people. Da- dogs. dogs. Okay. Yeah. Surprisingly. Okay, yeah. dogs. Uh, <laughs> are you stern and and emotionless when you play with your dogs? No. no. Why would you be, right? It'd be right. a waste of fucking time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? That's and so true. is your dog telling you what to do or are you telling your dog what to do? Most of the time I'm telling my dog what to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you have a master slave relationship with your dog. I'm sorry to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Careful. They depend on you for everything. Right. <laughs> So what are some other ways that you can practice being dominant in the bedroom? Sure. Um, well, I think it's going to be like an infinite list. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. But I think we can look at role playing uh, authority figures, right? There's all kinds of situations where we deal with authority. There's all kinds of power too. Um, you can have power of information. If you have a secret and you let your partner know that you have a secret, now you have power. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm, But I think mm -hmm. that there's something, there's something that's absolutely essential. If we're going to play with power, we need to make the distinction between power over and power with. Are y'all familiar with that concept at all? No. Mm -mm. Okay. So power over is the notion that power is a finite resource. And if I have it, it's because I've taken it from somebody. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now power with thinks of power as an infinite resource. If uh, we make a choice together for you to give me power, now you have empowered me, but you have not lost power. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So uh, if you are a prisoner and I am the prison guard, in actuality, I have taken power away from you. I've removed your agency, and now I have that agency, right, instead of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So not only do I decide where my body is and what I do and what I eat, but now I decide what you do and where your body is and where you eat, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Now, if we role play prison guard and prisoner, then we're both making that choice together. I've empowered you to have an experience of feeling powerless, even Mm -hmm. though you have not lost any agency. At any moment in that that experience, you could be like, I'm done, right? Mm -hmm. And then we're done. It's not, you You haven't lost any agency. You haven't actually lost your ability to choose what you eat, where you go, where you put your body, you know, all those things, mm-hmm. right? So I think that's super essential because power over is sort of what happens in the world and it can, it can be really tempting to like act those things out, but that's abuse, right? If I do a thing which, which removes your power, I'm actually abusing you. 
right? Mm -hmm. Whereas if we act something out that is attractive to both of us and we've agreed to it ahead of time and we can both end that whenever we want, then nobody's really powerless. Nobody's really, um, you know, nobody's really less powerful because of the experience. In fact, we're both more powerful. Mm -hmm. That makes so much sense. I Mm -hmm. thank you so much for making that distinction. I think that's something a lot of people need to learn about. Mm -hmm. And I love thinking of it that way because it's like by making a choice and by having like the full autonomy to make a choice, even if that choice is to give somebody else power, like that's still empowering. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. yeah, I love that nobody loses power. What are some good, you've mentioned a couple like prison guard and the prisoner. What are some other good like beginner role play situations you could start trying out with your partner for dominant submissive? I love doctor. I've been playing doctor since I was like four years old. (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty good. Okay. So like doctor patient. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then you get to kind of like examine their body. Um, You know, I like that one a lot. Um, I tend to go dark these days, like, but it's a fun dark. So there's all kinds of like twisted situations where, um, you know, reasons, excuses why the person is powerless. Like you owe me rent, you know, um, (laughs) yeah, there's, there's a lot of power exchange there in the Mm -hmm. landlord uh, renter situation. Uh, and that can, you know, it's, it's kind of fun too, because it can, it can help relieve the tension of the actual power disparages that we're experiencing in our lives. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, it can really suck to have a bad landlord. Totally. And, um, you know, maybe you switch it around too. You could, you could do like, um, power struggle is where you sort of establish a power dynamic and agree to deviate from that power dynamic. Right. So maybe, um, you know, your landlord, you play, okay, I'm going to be landlord. You're going to be the tenant, right? You don't have the rent. And I say, okay, well, I'm going to extort you. I'm going to extort sexual favors from you, right? And you go, okay, yeah, let's do that. And let's be kind of kinky. I really like bondage. And now you've handcuffed me to the bed and you go, now I'm really going to get it out of you. You know, like now I've got you. I'm Mm. not going to pay your rent and I'm just going to (laughs) kick you in the balls for half an hour. You know, like, um, because some people do like that. Some people really like being kicked in the balls for half an hour, but it, but it, you know, plays along with the role play of, Mm -hmm. of, oh no, I'm, you're getting back at me, Mm -hmm. you know? Totally. That's really fun. And I also like when you mentioned the doctor one, that's another situation where I feel like you wouldn't have to be serious for people who struggle Mm -hmm. keeping, a character? <laughs> I I struggle. Or for staying sure. serious. Like yeah. we don't stay serious no, in any ever. aspect of our lives. I so can't. It's impossible. Yeah, to do it in the bedroom when I haven't even practiced in real life mm-hmm. is really that's too much pressure. Yeah, well, not but, like, fun. but you don't why would you need to stay serious? Like do, are you guys out here like like having sex and like trying not to laugh? <laughs> trying too? not to laugh. No. <laughs> Tell them I'm not having fun, just yeah. sitting there with a straight this face. This sucks. This sucks. <laughs> that's so funny no i love that that's like a huge takeaway for me Mm -hmm. 100 percent. that's just who i am (laughs) yeah and i mean i'm um you know my identifiers right so i'm not just you know a dominant i'm also i i'm pansexual polyamorous and i'm dominant and i'm a sexual sadist so like my activity in the bedroom is sensations that are a wide range of sensations like so i'm not stuck just trying to give pleasure, I'm also happy to give pain and other, you know, varied sensations. And so like, when you say like, what, what can you do in the bedroom? I mean, um, my toy closet isn't even a toy closet anymore. It's a, it's a toy wall. (laughs) What kind of toys do you, have you collected over the years and what are some good, like first step toys? Um, A flogger is a great first step toy. Can it's you... not like super intense. Okay. Um, what exactly is it? Yeah. It's yeah. It's like a whip. It's, it, technically, it is a whip, but it's uh, it's like a bunch of leather falls, and because okay. because it's like a whole bunch of them, then the force is distributed, and so it's not it's not like a big impact, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's a good a good thing, and that can be we describe we tend to describe pain between like stingy and thuddy. There are other there's like pokey and scratchy and all those things too, mm-hmm. but. Um, Usually people are either, you know, have a preference for thuddy or stingy. And uh, I like to describe that as like, do you, you know, if I'm going to 
impact you in the ass, would you rather a spank or would you rather a punch? Right. Okay. Uh, because the punch is like deep tissue sensation, mm-hmm. whereas the spank is like totally surficial and it's, it's, that's going to be more of a stingy sensation versus a, a thud is going to be, you know, the punch. Um, but yeah, a flogger is a great first one, a paddle. But yep, yeah, I mean, spanking's great. Everybody's got a hand. So yeah. <laughs> can you um, use these as well? These two things yeah, at the end? Absolutely. I mean, but so most of the people I play with, like spanking my hand would just, I would break my hand before they would be satisfied. So. <laughs> Fair. So you have to use some reinforcements. <laughs> yeah. But so, but so with favorite toys, um, I mean, it's a long list, but I just got some like, claws that i really like they like stick on my fingers they're like 3d printed oh fun Um, so those are a lot of fun especially for like animal role play Mm -hmm. um i really like my uh my whips i do um single tail whips i do um i love my tasers i know people get a little scared of tasers but um they only hurt for a second yeah (laughs) we did a um, electric shock episode and it was so interesting the range that you could find with mm-hmm. e-stim stuff that's so cool i think i have like five different electrical stimulation devices Whoa. that's so fun yeah so there's the tens unit there's the mm-hmm. taser mm-hmm. there's the shock knife there's the um violet wand mm-hmm. uh-huh. and so maybe it's that that's it maybe that's it what's a shock knife yeah a shock knife is um, was originally designed to help people train um, knife fighting, right? Because they got bored, like they were not taking the pokes seriously, uh-huh. right? Yeah. Um, and so it's uh, you know it's a D battery connected, to, so that it goes and zaps the tip. Uh, two there's two prongs at the tip of a fake knife. That would make um, you take it seriously. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that'll do yeah, it. But I, think. I don't. I don't think. I mean, I think for every one that they sell for like knife fighting, I think they sell a thousand for Kingsters. So, one hundred percent. But that one's really intense because it has a capacitor. So the longer you hold the button, like the charge builds up, and so uh, that one can burn you. Oh my okay. gosh! So noted. Be yeah. wary when playing with that. <laughs> yeah, it's a very small burn. Yeah. <laughs> Like it's the size of a pencil mark, but um, but gotcha. it but it can damage your skin. Whereas a taser is not going to do that. Right. Okay. So if you wanted more of that, like thud, what toys would you go for? So um, thuddy again is like deep tissue mm-hmm. sensations, right? Uh, more likely to cause a bruise, for example. Okay. Um, and so heavier toys are going to be the best. My favorite uh, thuddy toy is my Cossack which is actually like a traditional military weapon, but it is essentially like a lead shot in a leather sheath. Um, It's technically a whip, but it doesn't even look like a whip. It looks like a flexible billy club. Um, Okay. But yeah, those, I mean, thicker things, heavier things, maybe things that have like a soft surface. So it's going to dampen the the sensation that you feel on the surface, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Would you be more stingy or thuddy? What I don't know. I was trying to figure that out. I, think, I don't know. Probably I, stingy. Yeah. I bruise easy. I bruise easy. So thuddy would be scary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not necessarily a problem unless you don't like bruises. So. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's true. I guess it just depends on where it is maybe. Right. And Easier if for I you want to feel sport accomplished. It. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. True. Actually is really true. Whenever I get bruises from like doing stuff, I'm like, oh. Oh, I did it. <laughs> so maybe, maybe I am study. Who knows? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so if you are someone that wants to be a submissive, but you want your partner to be more dominant, how do you start that conversation? And how do you start figuring out like what dominant means to you? You know, like what you would be comfortable with as a submissive? Yeah, usually it happens pretty naturally. You know, uh, there, like I said, there's a natural power dynamic that happens in every relationship. And I think, um, especially for women, it's because of our cultural conditioning, uh, women tend to have an easier time finding men who are willing to be dominant, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And you just sort of say, I like to be told what to do in the bedroom. Or, Mm -hmm. you know, I like a guy who can take charge. Like, these are very socially acceptable cues that are going to help people identify that you want to be submissive in the bedroom. Exactly. That's a very, I love that. Very clear, very... But not too scary to say mm-hmm. if you're new to all of this. Like, I just like yeah. to be told what to do in the bedroom. Yeah. yeah. And I, I should say it might be a little bit 
more challenging for people who don't conform to these like gender stereotypes of, mm. of dominance and submission, but it's no less popular. In fact, um, there are people who are very enthusiastic about, you know, female led relationships and male submission. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I've had a couple partners or a couple people that I've been talking to where it's like, I like being the submissive, but I'm also a pretty dominant flirter. (laughs) So I try to like tease out their flirtatious or more dominant side. But once I get them to that point, I want to be submissive, but it's almost like they don't know how to take the lead without me. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like that's kind of hard and I don't want to be like, come on. But I also, but sometimes you also want to be like, come on. Yeah, exactly. So I feel like that can be kind of difficult. It doesn't sound like you're submissive. Yeah. (laughs) That's maybe well, the issue is that you really, yeah. yeah. Maybe so let I'm me, doing let the wrong me, role. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. And let me tell you that passive and submissive are not the same thing. Active and dominant are not the same thing, right? Okay. So you could want your person to do the thing to you, but mm-hmm. if you're dictating when they're doing it, what they're doing, how they're doing it, you're dominating the situation. I like that differentiating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Like okay. the massage therapy. Right. Yeah. When I'm getting a massage, I'm absolutely bottoming to my masseuse. Mm-hmm. But if I'm just sitting there and not telling her what or him or her what I want, then I'm kind of being submissive. But if I'm like, all right, right between the shoulders, you really got to get in there a little to the left. Like I'm dominating the situation. I'm dominating from the bottom. And mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong with that. I think it gets a bad rap because it's often sort of, maybe in situations like yourself where you make the assumption that you want to be submissive, but you really, you want to be dominant, you know? Yeah. That is totally clicking with me. And I feel like I align so much more with that. It's kind of the difference and correct me if I'm wrong between do this and Ooh, I like that. Mm-hmm. Right. Cause like sure. do this would be more dominant. Right. 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 Ooh, I like that can still be submissive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. I feel like, I can see myself doing that more (laughs) of being like the passive dominant. Yeah. Kind of what you're explaining. I love that. That's, that's such a good explanation. Yeah. They think a princess is, is a title that uh, people often give to um, (laughs) dominant bottoms. I love that. I would love to be (laughs) called a princess. I'll take it. (laughs) I bet. I bet you will. (laughs) (laughs) so okay so I feel like I knew that that was mainly one of your questions was thinking like how to talk to your partner about being more dominant so does that align with you or does it still feel like that doesn't completely align with yeah I think sometimes my issue or our issue like with a partner is they don't know what to do when mm-hmm. I say, can mm-hmm. you be more dominant or can you take control or can you tell me what to do in the bedroom? And so I would love if we could go over some of the things that like, obviously the list is endless, but maybe just a few things that people can say um, to start getting into that role mm-hmm. if they really feel like they don't have the words for it. I'm going to challenge you here. I'm going to make you a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> do you know what you want them to do? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if yeah. I'm just too nervous so to say I don't know. So how are they or... going to know? Yeah. So how would they know, right? That's what my therapist said. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, so this is like, this is a huge issue. I mean, we deal with a lot of shame in our culture, right? Mm-hmm. And sometimes we are shamed into not masturbating, mm-hmm. right? And so we end up in these relationships when we're like, my partner can't make me come. And they're like, and they're like, okay, well, what do you like when you're trying to come? And they're like, I don't know. I don't masturbate. And that is that is a really difficult situation because mm-hmm. if you don't know what pleases you, then it is really hard for somebody else to figure it out, right? Absolutely. I think there yeah. are a lot of times when I'm like, I don't know what I want, but I want you to figure it out for me. Mm-hmm. That's, right. Yeah, and that's very quickly um, a toxic conversation. That can mm-hmm. very quickly become like, why aren't you yeah. psychic? Well, yeah. 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 Nobody's psychic. Right. That's why. Yeah. It's like the whole, like, I want you to want to do the dishes. Like nobody fucking wants to do the dishes. (laughs) But if you need me to do the dishes and you ask me to do them, Mm -hmm. then I will do them because I want to, Mm -hmm. to, you know, help you maintain the household. Right. If you are 
wanting to, like we were talking about, have a partner that's a little bit more dominant and you still don't really know what that means like word wise because you were asking Cass and neither one of us know. What are some tools? Like do you, should you be yeah. reading books? Should you be watching like porn? Like what type of things to like kind of get your, both of your wheels turning? Yeah. And I do appreciate that. I did not answer your question no. at all. <laughs> So, no, it was. Uh, we still, yeah, it, we got into other stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm, watching porn can be helpful uh, in communicating to your partner. It's important to remember that, like, that's not always realistic depictions, right? right? Mm-hmm. But you can be like, "Hey, this is the kind of fantasy that turns me on," mm-hmm. and so like sharing porn can be a great way to be like, "Hey, I really like this," right? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a that can be a good way to communicate. It can also be a good way to explore your own fantasies. And be like, hmm, I think I do like this. Maybe if I looked into more of it or, you know, but at the same time, like, I don't really like BDSM porn, but I like BDSM sex, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, so it doesn't always match up. But um, I recommend a checklist. There's there is online. Um, We can I can send you the link after. But if you Google like new BDSM Idaho checklist because the community in Idaho put this together. It's a 35-page survey wow. of all these different fetishes. And you can you can check off the different boxes and sort of be like, you know, these are all the things I like. Because it can be really vulnerable. It can be really challenging to go to your partner and say, hey, you know, I really want to lick your feet or whatever, mm-hmm. right? Uh, because you have your, you're being vulnerable and you're, you're vulnerable to being rejected, right? Yeah. And that can be really challenging. But if we can't be vulnerable with our partners, like who can be we be vulnerable with, right? Mm-hmm. So I think it is challenging, but it's worth doing. Um, and just kind of fessing up to what you're interested in. And if you don't know what you're interested in, make a checklist of things that you'd be interested in trying. Mm-hmm. And you can say, hey, like I really want to explore together. Is this something that you'd be willing to do? And, you know, I think... The other thing that's a big stumbling block for a lot of people is that uh, we don't always share the same arousal triggers, right? We don't always get aroused by the same things. Mm -hmm. And when we're in a state of arousal, our brain works one way. And we're not in a state of arousal, our brain works a different way, right? So if, if you're like, hey, I really love, you know, whips and chains and tasers and this and that and this and that and this and that, and I'm over here not not getting triggered by any of those things, not feeling aroused by any of those things. All I'm hearing is you want to do all these things. I don't know anything about. And it's really easy to just be like, no, Mm -hmm. or, uh, or be like, Hey, why don't you go look up BDSM? Right. That's a terrible idea. Right. (laughs) Go, you do your research and you show them what you want them to see. Because if you say, Hey, you go do research, there's a lot of bad info out there. Right. Mm -hmm. There's a lot. And, uh, (laughs) And they're likely to get scared, right? Mm -hmm. And so the best advice I can give is start slow. Mm -hmm. Start slow and and create a window, a small window of time. And and talk about it before and then talk about it after. Mm -hmm. You know? You can say, hey, like I really want to try this. This is why it's this is why it's interesting to me. This is why it's important to me. This is the way it makes me feel. I trust you. I want to try it with you. Um, I've got the kit or whatever. Uh, and then you do the thing and then when it's over, you go, how did that make you feel? Were you okay with that? Did you, would you want to see anything different? Would you, uh, would you like to do more of anything? You know, was there anything that you wish you had done? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. After and and that decompression, Mm -hmm. that sort of unpacking of the experience is as important as the experience perhaps, because it's, that's where you get to learn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like an aftercare too for all of that. And that's can't express that enough, how important all of that conversation is. And what you were saying kind of reminded me of things that we've talked about in previous ep- episodes, where it's like a, a want, a will, and a won't list that you could mm-hmm. also start doing with your partner with that fetish list that you have. So like maybe you, you start charting it, <laughs> mm-hmm. you and your partner of what you want and what you will and what you won't do. Um, that could also be a really great way to start exploring stuff. Which I think mm-hmm. is absolutely. We tend to use language like hard and soft limits, right? Where a hard limit is something you absolutely won't do. A soft limit is something like maybe you'd rather not do. Mm-hmm. And then on the other side, we have uh, fetishes and kinks or needs and uh, wants, right? Mm-hmm. And a need is 
the old word, most of the time people just use fetish and kink interchangeably, but a fetish is something that really is like essential for your successful uh, sexual experience, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's a fetish need. And if I'm like, if you're not poking me in my belly button, I'm not going to (laughs) come, right? So that's a fetish need. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, and then there's wants, the things you'd like to happen, but they don't have to happen for you to, for you to get there. Right. That sparked a question in me that I asked myself a while ago. So what, what is the difference then between that and a kink? Yeah. So a kink is like, I would say, I would say that a kink is like a want, Okay. right? Mm-hmm. Um, I want it to happen. Right. Um, but it's, it's not like required. Required, but fetish is yeah. required for yeah. sex. Okay. Yeah. Like for, for me, I would say like, I have an anal fetish, but mm-hmm. I have a spanking kink. Right. Okay. So if I had a partner who was like, never gonna, never gonna, you know, open up the back door, I'm it's probably not going to last, but, mm-hmm. uh, that same partner, if they decide, you know, I, I'm not going to take a spanking. Like I, I can live with that. I can live mm-hmm. with never mm-hmm. spanking my partner. And that's fine. Right. I'm wondering if we can get into like dirty talk, so to speak for a sure. little bit. Yeah. Um, do you have any like tools or tips in general? Because I think that's one of my Fear is not the right word, but maybe insecurities around being Mm. more dominant is literally like, I don't know what to say right now. And I guess I could be silent, but like when I want to say something, I don't always know what to say Mm. Um, unless I'm in a more submissive role and then I feel more comfortable. But like the dominant role, Mm. I don't feel super comfortable with words. (laughs) Yeah, Practice makes perfect, you know, Mm. Um, don't put all the pressure on yourself to like come up with it in the moment. Right. Especially mm-hmm. if you're aroused, it can, it can be tough to think. Right. So make a script ahead of time. Love that. We yeah. love and planning. Another <laughs> thing too is like, um, there's a lot of us that are like triggered by specific words in a bad way. Right. Mm-hmm. And there, and then other words are really hot, but to, it can make like no fucking sense. Like mm-hmm. I can call you a filthy, worthless whore all day long, but if I call you stupid, like, bam, you're out of your headspace, right? Right. So you want to like check those beforehand. So make that list. And then while everybody's got their pants on, go through Mm -hmm. that list and be like, hey, like, are any of these buzz kills for you? Mm -hmm. Are any of these hot? Are any of these like, and figure out what's hot and stick with that. Like, even if it's not a buzz kill, but it's not hot, like, Mm -hmm. you know, find the hot words, stick with those Mm -hmm. ones. That's so smart because I've, been in a, like been in sex <laughs> been in a sexual situation where i know they're trying to dirty talk but what they said just wasn't hot it wasn't a buzz kill but it wasn't hot and so i'm like all right let's let's wrap up mm-hmm. <laughs> you know and so that's so smart to do like a a list of words that you find fun because then that could just be like an evening like you make dinner you have mm-hmm. wine and you make like a list of things that you're your sexy find. words your sexy <laughs> words and then that kind of it's in your like piggy bank of things mm-hmm. that you can pull from which I think yeah. sounds really fun. Yeah, and I and I love that energy of like make an evening of it, like have some fun, have some wine, mm-hmm. because I think, I mean, and that's negotiating, right? That's mm-hmm. that's part of negotiation. And I think a lot of people feel really negatively about negotiation, but it's because they've been, you know, historically disempowered, and they've been in these situations where there, there's power over, where somebody is really holding them down, and their only opportunity to negotiate is up against a wall. Right. And that's not what this is. This is, you know, we both want to have a great time. Mm -hmm. Right. And hopefully we both really, you know, want to make sure the other person is having a good time, too. Right. If you are in the moment and you're at a loss for words, is there anything that you could try and do? Like, I think I've heard describing what's happening, but I think Mm -hmm. I would do that in a really unsexy way. (laughs) Your leg hair is rubbing up against mine and it hurts. (laughs) So don't say that probably <laughs> or do or do. Um, I mean, you don't have to say anything, right? Mm-hmm. I think that there's a danger in, as humans. We've got this giant fucking gray matter that it does a great lot for us, but it also can be an issue. It can also really get in the way. Mm-hmm. Right. And when we're body to body, the mind maybe doesn't have to be involved, but sometimes right. it just inserts itself and you're, you're busy fucking 
and you're like, what am I supposed to say? And it's yeah. like, <laughs> who said you had to say anything? Mm-hmm. Be here. Yeah. <laughs> so I think, you know, I think uh, the biggest barrier to intimacy is being not present. Right. And so if you bite off more than you can chew, if you like tell yourself you're going to dirty talk the whole time and you just don't have the script for it, like now you're stuck in your head trying to think of words and like maybe just focus on being present, you know, be with your partner, be in the moment. How does your body feel? What's the temperature of the air? What is the sound? What is the smell? Mm -hmm. You know, just be here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, that makes so much sense. (laughs) Because it, it really, you really can get wrapped up in our head. And I think you and I talk about that a lot, that getting stuck in your head is like the number one mood kill mm-hmm. for me. Um, so if it's just not coming to you, just be in the moment. Because then maybe you can like be moving more with your body. And mm-hmm. that's more dirty than the actual words that would have come out of your mouth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's true. So I know that your work extends just beyond the basics of being dominant in the bedroom. So can you go into a little bit like your book about what you're super passionate about? Yeah, absolutely. Um, So I just in May released this book, Mind Fucking Mindfully, A Guide to Mental Manipulation for BDSM and Sadomasochism. And it's not, um, I want to say it's not a book that you need to know a lot about kink ahead of time to enjoy because I wanted to, I made sure that this was something that was accessible to everybody because I don't know who's picking up the book Mm -hmm. and I don't want to talk about like, you know, here's how you use the most advanced sword, right? When it might be the first time you've ever touched a knife. Right. Right. We need to to get the (laughs) basics. Uh, And so a lot of it is like understanding what is not consensual mind fucking. What is like when people are messing with each other, in ways that is not ethical or not erotic or not consensual uh, because you need to kind of know those things ahead of time to be able to do these things. But, but I cast a really wide net mind fucking uh, for those unfamiliar in the, in the BDSM (laughs) sense is a, any practice which renders your partner to have a specific emotionality or psychology, right? So uh, I know it's a really broad definition, mm-hmm. but I wanted to make sure I like captured it all. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so something that I think we've all done is like, uh, you're really going to get it when you get home. Mm, okay. Right? okay. That's really interesting and mysterious expectations or like, mm-hmm. uh, this is a fun one. I, not everybody's done this one, but you'd be like, you know, I know what you've done and you should confess to me. And that would make it a lot easier because mm-hmm. there's no getting out of it. I know what you've done and you're going to pay for it. But if you admit it, then I might feel like being kind. Oh, I do that all the time. Right. And I, I'm, maybe <laughs> I don't even know you did anything. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Right. And now you're like, holy shit, what did I do? <laughs> what did I do? And you're in, like in your own head, like inspecting your behavior. And, mm-hmm. and for somebody who like finds being in trouble erotic, like that's super cool. Okay. So could... With that broad definition, it doesn't have to be that, like, you just make somebody scared or anything like that. It could be, like, that you make them excited or horny. Is that true? Yeah. Well, hopefully it all makes you horny, yeah. right? <laughs> uh, but, I mean, yeah. And I think that's that's a misconception even in, in the BDSM community that mind fucking like, has to be scary stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it can be, right? And because that sometimes gets the most attention because it's, like, the most – it's the most out there. Mm-hmm. Um so that is a lot different than what I was thinking it was. Um, well, first, if I'm being honest, I thought it was just fucking someone in your mind, <laughs> like looking at someone and being like, ah, yeah, tell, like imagining all the ways you'd have sex with them. Mm. Like I first pictured. And then the second one was just being um, super scary and like mm-hmm. more of a um, humiliation type of a feeling rather than a you know, could be confused, could be a little scared, could be this. It it just sounded scarier than how you described it. Yeah, well, it can be, it can be humiliating. Mm -hmm. You know, Um, I think the types of mindfucking as I've identified them are expectation, perceived power, illusion, asymmetric information, um, sorry, perspective alteration, degrading or ennobling, and humiliation. Okay, wow, that is, that's a lot. That's a lot more than I was thinking. Wow. And that's yeah. really, I'm surprised that there wouldn't have ever been something laid out like that because that's, that would be my first question 
to you is what is what are the different types of mind fucking. So that's great yeah. that you're able to list them out. Well, there's it hasn't been laid out like that because nobody's ever written this book. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody's ever written a guide to mind fucking um, because I believe because people are really cautious about how it might enable bad actors. But I think that all things considered with the book, you're also enabling uh, receivers to be better judges of abuse, right? Okay. So, so, so hopefully I... this will like lift up the community and their ability to distinguish what is what is okay and what is not okay. I love that. That's really powerful. Mm-hmm. Education all around, which I think is fantastic. Helping people in all the ways. Yeah. Do you have to be a good liar to be good at mind fucking? Oh. No. No, okay. you can tell the truth if you could be clever. Um, okay. I think that... So one uh, or the other. <laughs> and deception is not required. Okay. Right? Uh, deception is not... I mean, deception is helpful, right? But I can say... Um, like tomorrow you're going to be the queen and everybody that I know that is participating is going to help serve you on your queen's day. Right. And so like that's ennobling, which is the opposite of degrading. Oh, okay. Okay. yeah. I was going to ask what that word was. I like that one. I couldn't remember it. uh, So ennobling like royalty. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that's, uh, it's out in the open. I'm not, uh, I mean, there's positive mind fucking, right? There's like, uh, okay, think about like gaslighting. Mm-hmm. You know what gaslighting is? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, and for listeners who don't know, gaslighting is essentially lying in a specific way to undermine somebody's perceptions and undermine their own like sense of sanity, mm-hmm. right? And be like, I didn't do that. You didn't, you know. Exactly. Right. Uh, you must be crazy, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's positive gaslighting. Like we can, if if you are always talking down on yourself and you're always like giving yourself a hard time and you want to not do that, right? Then we can agree that I'm going to pretend that never happened. And then I'm going to point those behaviors out as being uncharacteristic, even though they're characteristic, right? Oh, you never do that. I don't know why you're being so down on yourself. You never, you never talk down to yourself. What's gotten into you, right? That's so cool. That's really cool. That's fun. You should have one of those days. Yeah. You should both have one of those days. You just have a partner. That's why yeah. I'm thinking. <laughs> I mean, you Pointing can do out it to my me. insecurities. <laughs> no. no. He already does that for you. He's yeah. very kind. That's true. That's really cool. What are some more, like, I guess I don't want to necessarily call anything negative, but more, like, positive ways to gaslight, so to speak, or to... Um, mind fuck somebody yeah so um there's a lot of ways that are mind fucking that are positive because they rely on finding things that are erotic for your partner Mm -hmm. right and so i would say all of the things in the book are erotic consensual and ethical and so they're all they're all positive in that uh, i think getting people off is positive Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. (laughs) um but let me think there is one this one i think you'll like because it's ennobling it's also illusion and um, and also perhaps like an expectation. I think maybe more expectation than illusion. Um, and this is this is a story I've heard from a bunch of different people. Uh, I wasn't able, it's not in the book because I wasn't able to pinpoint to, to whom it actually happened, but I, I have no doubt that it actually happened. Uh, there, you, are you familiar with body writing? People write stuff on the body. No. Uh-uh. Okay, so it's usually an act of degradation where you like you write like slut and whore and oh, stupid yeah. and worthless on somebody's body. I think there was like a dove they, campaign. Oh, right. Yeah. Where they wrote yeah, nice Yeah, things. except yeah, yeah they, in a nice way. You know, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, but this this is for people who are who find um that type of thing erotic, who find you know those kinds of words erotic. And so it's consensual, um, but it's you know, it is what it is. So it's not new Mm -hmm. right that's what body writing usually is so um this woman was prepared for that she was nude she was blindfolded and her partner had a pen had a a sharpie or whatever and said that they were going to go around and have everybody write nasty stuff on their body right and so she's feeling degraded right even though she can't see any of it Mm -hmm. right 
And then at the end of the night, uh, it turns out that there was like a sign on her chest that said, write something positive about me. And so all over her body was like, I love your laugh. You're so funny. I, you know, I'm so glad we're friends. You're beautiful. All these things, right? So instead of being degrading, it was actually ennobling. And she was under the illusion. She had this false expectation that she was about to get humiliated, right? Or degraded, not humiliated. Mm -hmm. Um, And then she took her blindfold off and she just burst into tears, into happy tears because it was so sweet and everybody was so nice to her. That is oh, so sweet. That would make me cry. That's so cute. That's really nice. Wow. And she got to enjoy being degraded as well. Right, mm-hmm. right. Yeah, so she got both of those. That's really sweet. See, so many different things that you can do. Yeah. I like the idea of illusion. I feel like that could be something I'd like to learn more about. That sounds fun. Yeah. Ennobling, yeah. illusion, and expectation are three yes. things. That yes. <laughs> makes sense for me. Oh, this has been so eye-opening and such a yes. great conversation around dominance, mindfuck, like all of it. And I thank you so much for sh- opening up about your personal life and also just being here for our very basic questions. <laughs> yeah, it's my pleasure. And if I can jump back to, because I feel like I – I intentionally like didn't answer a few of your questions, but uh, one of the questions that I wanted to answer is like, you know, what are resources that people can have Mm -hmm. when they're just Mm -hmm. learning? And there are a lot of classes. There used to be sort of this mentorship uh, system in place where if you wanted to get into BDSM, you need to find a mentor. And that still happens to some degree, but there's just so many new people that that's not sustainable. And so what has happened is to replace that is there's a lot of classes. And because of COVID, everything's online. Uh, So, for example, if you go to my website, you can find lots of recorded classes. We've got all kinds. We do classes every week um, between my house and Sanctuary LAX. And we've got all kinds of recorded classes. Gumroad is a great way to go and select which class you want. Gumroad.com slash House of Algos. And there's also my Patreon where you can go and you can see all the recorded classes uh, for for like a subscription. That's awesome. And so is that for all experience levels? Like even if you're just wanting to dip your toe in or if you've been in it for a little while? Yeah, most of them are beginner level classes. Okay. Um, and then I would also recommend for people who sort of get through all of those and, and want to continue to go for uh, coaching or maybe if those don't address your needs directly, then you can do coaching, which is like just one on one class type thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that can be either like a training methodology or it can be like sex coaching or BDSM coaching. So I'm happy to do that to help people. Wonderful. So many, so many resources that, you know, you just need to talk about so that people know that they're out there. Yes. Right. You've already mentioned a few of the ways that people can continue to connect with you, but is there any, are there any other places that listeners can connect with you after the episode? Uh, Yeah. So uh, for people who are in Los Angeles, I'm affiliated with Sanctuary LEX Studios. Uh, My website is houseofalgos.com. My handle on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. TikTok, thank you, Mm -hmm. is House of Algos. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty consistently posting. And uh, I guess the Gumroad and the Patreon are the best ways to interact with me and get like that really good educational content. Amazing. Perfect. Thank you so, so much. This was so much fun and so informational. I feel like I know my whole idea of dominance has changed. I have a whole different idea of the princess I am (laughs) and I love it that's so cool so yes thank you so much princess Emma (laughs) hear her roar hear me roar give me my crown I already have a crown that was a trick question (laughs) and my pillows Thank you so much to Sir Ezra for being on the podcast today and giving us a lay down of a lay down of the law (laughs) (laughs) of the law. And thank you to our listeners for tuning in. The lay of the land. (laughs) The lay lay of of my land. Of my land. And if you have a few minutes, head on over to Apple Podcasts 
rate, review, and subscribe to Honey Do Me Podcast. If you leave a written review, we'll love you for the rest of your life. It's just fact. It's just fact. It's it's a formula. That I don't make the a rules. A plus B equals C. Yeah. Sorry. C is cast loving me forever. <laughs> C. And if this is going to be the episode that gets you to leave a written review, go ahead and leave a little crown oh. at the end for oh, Princess for me. Emma. For me. Okay. I was going to say handcuffs. I like the crown. Oh, okay. X day on the... No. Crown. 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 Um, you didn't even have to say X day on the handcuffs because we didn't make it a thing, but you wanted to make it more of a thing. So here we go. Wow. <laughs> anyway. Tension. So I will see you next week. <laughs> no, you won't. You have a new job. Oh, yeah, I do. Your that's water feature. Oh, <laughs> God. What a. That's going to be a crossover. Just a crown water feature. A princess water feature. Wow. I could charge extra. You could charge extra. extra. If you want to wear the crown, it's an extra $30 a minute. A minute. <laughs> I'm expensive. I think human water features come cheap. Nah, girlfriend. No, I'm very expensive. Amateur, yes, but yes. expensive. <laughs> of course. All right. Well, All right. we'll see you eventually. Yep. Bye. Bye.